Blackout and OSC. It can be a little challenging to get started, but I'm going to show you how to do it with this X-Touch Compact. This is routed in uh, through everything to the iPad, so they're all talking to each other no matter what you do. If you move something on here, if you move something on the fader, or if you move something in the iPad Blackout app, it all talks to each other. So let me show you how to set it up. Now starting off with the program you're gonna need, you're gonna to need Touch OSC. Now this is a program that you can download for free uh, off the website, I'll put the link in the description. Second thing you're gonna need is if you want, you can have some kind of board. I have the X-Touch Compact, you don't have to use this. It could be any board that has MIDI operation where you can route the actual buttons to Touch OSC and then you can send the commands through MIDI through Touch, SC, Touch OSC to the iPad. Now this is a kind of layout I made to match my X-Touch. This is not online, I made this myself um, just to have it a visual as well on the side because when you have Touch OSC, you're gonna have to have it open and on anytime you wanna use it uh, just in the background. It doesn't have to be actually on the page, but it has to be in the background somewhere. Now if you go to Blackout's page on the website to manuals, I'll put the link in the description again, and you come over to OSC Connect here, it's gonna give you a list of all the commands possible with OSC. Now you can't do every single button on the console with this. Um, it's just really the main buttons like faders, all your uh, buttons for the keyboards pretty much, uh, some encoders, but it's limited to how much you can do. Um, and that's where MIDI comes in to supplement that if you wanted. But all these commands here are is what you're gonna patch in to OSC to get it to talk back to each other. I wanna patch in my first fader here onto my fader on the X-Touch Compact. I'm gonna come in and click my fader, so you can make any fader for this, it doesn't have to be from this project. You, you, all you would do is right click, and then you would hit add fader. And then you bring up your fader. So I'm gonna scroll down, you're gonna see MIDI control, there's messages here, you have MIDI and you got OSC. Um, two messages it's sending. So now if I wanna patch this into Blackout, I'm gonna come down here to address. First I'm gonna delete this name, this is only if you want to name it, um, so you can see in the log format for the editor, but you don't have to have it, so I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to click on this slash, and then I'm going to come down to constant here. And this is where you're going to plug in those um, lines of code from the blackout manual. So for this particular one, I want a uh, global fader. So I'm going to go slash blk slash fader slash global slash, now this is the number you want, so depending on what fader you want, uh, this is where you put the number. So I want the first fader, so I'm gonna put one, and then slash, and then level. And now that's up here in the address bar, which is what we want, and you wanna make sure you click on this X here. This is a variable value, so it's, it's gonna be an integer, because this is also on the uh, blackout manual, and you wanna set it from zero to 255, because that's the range it's gonna be from your fader from zero to full. Now that's all patched in. Now you can set up the MIDI as well, so my particular fader, the first fader would be um, a control change, channel one, and then a constant of one. So my MIDI, everything's enabled, send, receive. I've got the X triggered, control change, channel one, and then control one, which is what my particular board is. Yours might be different, and depending on which fader you're on, this uh, number here is gonna change. But that's if you want to have the fader talking to the OSC, and then sending it to uh, OSC to blackout. So you could just disregard the MIDI if you don't have it. This could also be a way you can use your iPad to control it from a distance, a different iPad, if you wanted to. This is one way to do it. So I'm gonna make sure these are enabled here on the OSC as well. I don't know why that one was off. I think I hit it on accident. All the connections are um, Unity here, so it's gonna take all of them to every input to output. Um, you got your X there. Everything else is good, so we can close all this up. Now if I come in and I hit Control E, or if you come up to View, and then you go uh, toggle editor either way. It comes up with the screen which allows you to move things. So if you can see now, if I move this here, it's moving my fader on my um, X-Touch. That's all set up. We need to update a few connections in OSC here, but first we need to get Blackout up to give us a little information on which uh, port and which IP we're gonna need. I'm gonna come up to um, my link status here. Now this is where we gotta make a couple changes. We wanna come over to connect to device and then you're gonna to wanna to come down to OSC here. Scroll down, there's an OSC tab. Now you don't need the MIDI, the, the MIDI uh, add-on for this. I have it, because I do do a little bit of MIDI, but um, OSC 
comes with the standard license, if you, even if you just have one universe. If you have this plugged in, either Ethernet or Wi-Fi, it's gonna tell you the IP code up here. So we got 192.168.50.197. So now we need to take that information and a few of these other things and come back to OSC here. So first you wanna come into File uh, or Edit and go to your um, Preferences. Now, if you have a MIDI uh, board set up, you wanna come down to the MIDI and make sure that you have all these on general, the in, MIDI in, MIDI out, and then whatever your board is, you wanna have that clicked on for input and output. A few of these others you don't need. I happen to have some other stuff set up like RTP MIDI. Now you're gonna to wanna to come over here. There's a little bit, uh, a link tab up here. You wanna click that, um, and then you wanna come down to OSC. So right here is where you're gonna to wanna to put that IP that we just said. 192.168.50. That's going to be your, your host or your iPad, whatever device you're running Blackout on. That's where you're going to put your IP. Then you're going to set the uh, send port to whatever Blackout says as well. It says Blackout receive address and port. So that's the same IP and then we got a port of 9999. Uh, it might be different on yours. It depends. But you can't change um, Blackout's receive port. Uh, but that's where you're going to want to put it here in the send port. 9999. You want to make sure that your UDP is on and then this is the host. So the host is what your computer is or whatever you're running Touch OSC on. That's going to be where you plug this um, address in. So my computer which I'm running Touch OSC on is the same. It's a dot .180 address. So you got to make sure that the IPs match. So it's got a, the first three numbers all have to be the same. Doesn't matter what it is really. 192.168.50 they have to match. And then the, the last three numbers, 180, it'll automatically recognize it that it's on the same network. And if you cannot find that, you're gonna to wanna to come over here. A quick way to do that is just to control run. So if you have a PC, I just like to do control R or uh, Windows R, and then that'll bring up your run tab and you just hit CMD, CMD. That'll bring up your CMD. You just type in IP config all in one word, just like that, hit enter. Then it's gonna come up with your ports. So as you can see here, I have an ethernet adapter to ethernet. You're gonna to wanna to look for the IP4V address, which is 192.168.50.180. So that's where I got that number, if you happen to not be able to find it. So that's where I put the number here. You wanna make sure those match or you're not gonna get any signal coming back to the host. And then for the port, now this can be set to anything. I just have it 65535. You set it on here, and then you're gonna wanna come back to touch OSC and make sure that port lines up with the receive port. So this could be any number as long as they match. So once you get that all set up, you hit done. Now if I come back in here, play around with this, let me come back to my faders tab here. Now I'm gonna look for the first fader here. I'm gonna move it on touch OSC, and it's moving on the iPad as well as on my touch and then it's moving there. Now if I do the opposite and I play around with it here, it's moving as well on there, moving back and forth there. And if I move it here on the touch, it's moving there, it's moving here. So that's the basics of how to set it up with Touch OSC. Now you can also, you can do all the faders, you can do these buttons up here, like I have these buttons mapped to up here like that I have all these maps so no matter what I do here I can basically toggle everything on and off it's a lot quicker way to move around and things like that I found the best way to do this is to have everything hardwired into a switch um, so they're all talking to each other if you try to do this wirelessly it's gonna have issues always want to have it hardwired just to have the best results up to the point of sending it out to a node or something then you could go wireless maybe but the computer wired into here I also have the iPad wired into here and it's not hooked up right now but I have that uh, cable somewhere so that's wired in and then I have another cable that comes out and goes into uh, my node to make it DMX to take it from Ethernet to DMX so those are the things you're gonna need if you want to run this kind of setup if you guys want to know anything in particular let me know but I'm gonna be going over some more so if you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a like, subscribe, it really helps me out. We'll see you next week.